Hi everybody, my name is Patrick Gurel. I am one of two founders and the head of product at frst.com. We're a blockchain intelligence platform. Uh, we created a graph of wallets and transactions used to personify activity. And the types of activity we look for typically are gonna be trading, fraud, a lot of stolen fund recovery, tax liability, identification, and for the most part, investing. So today I'm introducing the FRST platform for the very first time to the public. But real quick, uh, I just wanna go over some basics about the company. We were founded in 2017, and most of the strategies that I will be sharing with you guys over the next few weeks, uh, we in fact used to fund the company and survived through the whole 2018 apocalypse by using this as a trading strategy before we were actually funded. And I don't really think a lot of people understood the value or importance of what we were working on at the time. Um, if you go back to some of my early Facebook posts on ACAP, for example, um, I posted how to use these strategies to actually find and follow whales and see what they were purchasing and trading. And at the time, uh, I'd used one example that was probably the most significant, which was uh, whale wallets purchasing EOS tokens. And I think from, let's see here, October 6th all the way to, uh, that's October 6th, 2017, to, uh, let's see what the date was here, uh, January 12th, 2018, uh, just in the single trade EOS had done 30x and in fact later on it had done 40x and I wanted people to know that I was serious about this So I took pictures of all the trades based on this information. So November 16th, 2017 um, I placed some more trades as I saw the price fall below what the whales were buying it for And I took pictures of all these trades and you can see I bought EOS tokens all the way down at 48 and a half cents through a, a bunch of different orders that I had placed So that's all great. That's all dandy. But where are we now? So what you're looking at here is actually a graph of the most valuable wallets that sat outside of Quadriga CX. And this is a three-dimensional graph that we use to uh, basically generate what we call a heuristic about activity. So we can kind of identify or look at activity that we see happening around specific wallets. And for the most part, we like to generalize uh, a lot of this activity so that we can try to really see what is happening in the differentiators between wallet activity. So some things that you might notice, it looks like lines between these different wallets and the wallets are the balls that you see and the size of the wallet depicts the delta of value or how much value I'd passed through that wallet in the certain time slice that we're looking at because we're not looking at real time data. Uh, we're actually looking at a, a roll up of historical data that allows us to view all this information in a summary. So what you see there is the primary uh, last known Quadrica CX treasury wallet. And these are all the most valuable wallets that sit outside of it. But also what we've done here is we've included the next node out plus the next node out. So this is an N plus two, uh, you know, what you're looking at, graph of transactions that happen between the most valuable wallets on Quadrica CX and other places that they had sent money. So a better example of this actually is looking at ICOs. And ICOs share a lot of the most uh, uh, significant personas that we use today in trading. And what you're looking at here is actually the 0x ICO. And what you see here is the actual 0x ICO wallet down here in the center. And all these little things that you see blowing up like fireworks on the 4th of July are actually ICOs. Uh, those different colors represent the different color tokens that are be being distributed to the whale wallets outside of 0x. And what we can identify here are the wallets that have interacted with 0x and all of the other things that they have interacted with as well. So we can see all the different types of investments that these whales have actually participated in. And you get some really strange uh, things that you notice on the outliers, right? And uh, that allows us to look at this information in broad uh, and try to identify wallets of significant activity. And this is a three-dimensional model. If I bake this down to a 2D model real quick, what you'll see is the actual values depicted on here because I have everything kind of scaled down. And you can basically tell obviously which ones are exchanges because they hold the most money or the most value. And um, kind of overscales it here and kind of oversimplifies what we're looking at. But it gives you a general idea of you know what you're looking at and how valuable these wallets are. So we didn't like reading white papers and we didn't like having to uh, you know identify the things that we thought were going to be value and try to trade on that strategy. Uh, initially what we did was we just identified the wallets that had made the most money trading in ICOs and just followed what they did. So I think what I'd like to do is share with you guys uh, the starting point of how to identify these wallets. It's just one of the personas that we actually deal with which is venture capital. Uh, but there's a lot of personas that we can actually take a look at just by looking at 0x. 
So this is a really simple example. Um, here's our API. And in our API, I can actually make some pretty structured queries. And what I'd like to do here is just show you that. Uh, this is the 0x ICO token address. And what we have here are all of the wallets that received tokens before the August 15th, uh, 2017 ICO distribution. You get a list of wallets that have all participated or received tokens before everybody else. And that actually comes down to pretty much three different types of uh, personas. And the types that we like to find when we're looking at ICOs are obviously the founder wallets. If we can identify the founder wallets, then we can establish some kind of confidence in their product. Secondly, would be team members and uh, what we call vesting wallets. So how often, how frequently do team members receive tokens for their work? And uh, what percentage of the holdings is actually distributed to the team? So we like to see those uh, types of wallet holdings because it kind of tells us the confidence of the team members in the product as well. But uh, again, my favorite is actually trying to identify venture capital. And venture capital wallets are actually really easy to find on a blockchain. Um, I'm going to go into that stuff here a little bit later in another video. So I just wanted to briefly cover you know, what it is and how personification works. Uh, the types of individuals that are using this information are going to be your high frequency trading desks, your venture capital firms, exchanges, OTC trading desks, a lot of hedge funds. I deal with a lot of ICO and decentralized applications, um, a lot of algo, day traders, quantitative traders, data scientists, engineers, pretty much anybody in security and compliance. Um, and outside of that, uh, we also have a lot of great investors that have been working with to develop these strategies, which include a lot of high frequency trading funds. Uh, in Chicago. So CMT Capital, Lacuna, um, some of our investors include BitMEX and Vestigo Ventures. So these are all companies that have a real high stake in the crypto game. And what they're looking for are, you know, basically how to create trading signals based on transparency of blockchain. So again, my name is Patrick Burrell. Uh, go ahead and if you feel like it, like or subscribe. Uh, you can reach out to me on Facebook or Hit us up at frst.com. Um, we're pretty good about getting back to uh, anybody that has questions. And again, feel free to just ask questions to me directly. Um, I talk about this stuff all the time. Uh, again, my name is Patrick Grell. Uh, thanks for taking the time. Bye.